Good evening, this is Viewpoint. I'm Zakhar Jacob. In cricket, there is such a thing as gifting your wicket away when you're batting well. Navjot Singh Sidhu would know that very well because he just gifted his wicket away. He resigned as PPCC chief, hoping that he could take the moral high ground and force the High Command to accede to his demands. The Congress High Command does not feel the need to because they feel that in Mr. Channi, Charanjit Singh Channi, the Chief Minister, they have found an able replacement for Amrinder Singh. The question, has Mr. Sidhu miscalculated his rebellion? What will it take for the High Command to pacify him? And if they do not, and if Sidhu continues to insist on his resignation, then is a breakup between the Congress and Navjot Singh Sidhu just inevitable? ਪੰਜਾਬ ਪੱਖੀ ਇੱਕ ਏਜੰਡੇ ਦੀ ਹੈ ਜਿਹਦੇ ਤੇ ਮੈਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਦੇਰ ਦਾ ਖੜਾ ਰਹਾ ਔਰ ਇਸ ਏਜੰਡੇ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਦੇ ਪੱਖ ਪੂਰਨ ਦੇ ਲਈ ਮੈਂ ਹੱਕ ਸੱਚ ਦੀ ਲੜਾਈ ਲੜਦਾ ਰਿਹਾ ਇਹਦੇ ਚ ਕੋਈ ਸਮਝੌਤਾ ਸੀ ਹੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਮੈਨੇ ਅੱਜ ਵੀ ਸਿੱਧੂ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਸੇ ਟੈਲੀਫੋਨ ਤੇ ਬਾਤ ਕੀਤੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਪਾਰਟੀ ਸੁਪਰੀਮ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਪਾਰਟੀ ਦੀ ਆਈਡੀਓਲੋਜੀ ਕੋ ਮਾਨਤੀ ਹੈ ਔਰ ਉਸਕੋ ਉਸਕੇ ਉੱਪਰ ਚਲਤੀ ਹੈ ਇਨ ਆ ਪਾਰਟੀ ਐਟ ਦ ਮੋਮੈਂਟ देयर इज नो ਪ੍ਰੈਜ਼ੈਂਟ ਸੋ ਵੀ ਡੋਨਟ نو ਹੂ ਇਜ਼ ਟੇਕਿੰਗ ਥੀਸ ਡਿਸੀਜਨਸ ਵੀ نو ਐਂਡ ਯੈਟ ਵੀ ਡੋਨਟ There is a breakup between the Congress and Navjot Singh Sidhu just a matter of time. Why is the Congress now compared to yesterday suddenly drawing the red line for Navjot Singh Sidhu? Remember he was handpicked by Priyanka Gandhi Vadra as the PPCC chief. This photograph was famously tweeted out by Navjot Singh Sidhu. Giving in to Sidhu now will show the leadership as weak and indecisive and willing to compromise. Quitting as PPCC chief just months before the polls in just a few months after he was appointed that does not make mr siddu look good it will also send the wrong signal uh just ahead of the punjab polls that they are willing to give in to this kind of blackmail and number 5 uh the congress high command also knows it's going to be tough for mr siddu he can't go to the bjp he came from there a few years ago the amadmi party he's been dilly dallying with that uh st- starting his own party a regional entity and that too this are uh, far close into the uh, into the election well we don't know how that's going to play out for mr navjot singh sidhu so all in all the congress high command seems to have drawn a red line and said that he needs to take his resignation back they've given him some kind of a deadline till later tonight and if he doesn't then so be it they are willing to look at possible replacements rashid kidbai author and journalist now joining us charu pragya is national spokesperson of the bjp hemant atri senior journalist and vipin pabbi uh, senior journalist also joining us uh, rashid i'll start with you first is it clearer now that uh, the high command is not willing to i mean they will try what they can to try and pacify mr siddu uh, but his demands of changing the dgp changing the advocate general removing this minister who he calls quote unquote tainted those demands are not going to be met rashid to you yeah i think i think uh, zakat they have uh, you know the congress has two prong strategy first they are trying through informal channels to resolve it at local level local level i uh, mean that you know pragat saying people like uh, those who are close to uh, siddu and prevail upon him actually the appointment of some bureaucrats and officials is indeed questionable because some data <laughs> supposedly make recommendations and all and the people who were junior they were abstained this happens in many states and in in many establishments so there is i i don't think there's a big deal if some kind of corrective action is taken because uh, as i keep saying you see for the congress it's very difficult to dump siddu on these issues because these are very emotive issues we beat kartarpur sahib corridor issue or okay. uh, uh, this bsp issue so what i'm saying is that congress is still has not given up though this kind of war of attrition is going on it yeah. looks as if it's all is over but all is not o- over yeah, so what is, are the best case options as far as mr siddu is concerned bipin babbi i mean uh, we know that he has been dilly dallying with the aam aadmi party uh we're not sure you know if that is an option 
Uh, can he start a regional party on his own? Again, this close to the election, uh, we don't know how easy or difficult that's going to be. So what really are the options for, for Mr. Sidhu? Zaka, I must tell you, though, he had been uh, the, an MP for three or four times, perhaps. But as far as grassroots politics is concerned, he has never been out in the field. He has been, yes, attending a, you know, some of the election releases, all that he has been uh, you know, addressing. But he hasn't had made contacts at the grassroots level with people or organizing any marches or demonstrations or even you know meeting people and all. So he hasn't been into that. So he's not a grassroots politician. So to say that he might form a regional party... Uh, I don't think he will do it. Even if he does it, I don't think it's going to be success because many people still don't see him as a chief ministerial candidate. Mm -hmm. uh, they uh, still think that he's not a very serious candidate for a chief minister. So I don't think he, he can let put his bets on a regional party. But I think as far as the Congress is concerned, the high command is concerned, I think they, are, they, are, they, they have been put in a very, very embarrassing situation. Yeah. If they withdraw these people now, like the DGP and AGP, it's a total embarrassment for the Congress. So I think they have drawn a line that they will see whatever best we can do under the circumstances. But it will be a big letdown for the Congress government that within two, three days of appointing somebody, they have to take this back. Take this back. So very right. si embarrassing situation. Okay, just give me a moment because we have an exclusive interview that my colleague Pallavi Ghosh has done with... Uh, all right, before that, we're getting a piece of breaking news. And this is this is going to be big. Uh, Captain Amrinder Singh, the former Punjab Chief Minister, ha is just meeting Amit Shah. In fact, he's reached Amit Shah's residence at 6A Krishna Menon Marg here in Delhi. He's meeting the Union Home Minister right now. This is something that we had been talking about since yesterday, since Captain decided to fly out from Chandigarh to come to Delhi. At the airport, he said that this is merely a courtesy call. He's not visiting any politicians. Those were the words that Amrinder Singh used. Uh, when he landed at the airport yesterday, he also very famously tweeted last night saying, I told you so, Navjot Singh Sidhu is not fit to lead the border state of Punjab. But this is a huge political development. Captain Amrinder Singh has now reached 6A Krishna Menon Marg. You can see those pictures. There you go. Captain Amrinder Singh in that SUV being driven in to Amit Shah's residence at 6A Krishna Menon Marg. He's right now meeting the Union Home Minister. This is a hugely significant political development, uh, any number of options are on the table. The captain could possibly be uh, given an invitation to join the BJP. The captain could uh, have some kind of understanding, if you will, with the BJP. So this is a huge, uh, hugely significant political meeting. Maria Shakila, political editor with more details. Uh, this is no longer just a courtesy call. This is a hugely political, politically relevant and important meeting, this, between Captain Amrinder Singh and the Union Home Minister. And this is a meeting taking place at HM's residence, Zaka, and that is the reason why it is, uh, you know, you can attach all political significance to it. Because if you remember, when Captain Amrinder Singh landed in Delhi, the question that was asked by the reporters to uh, the former Punjab Chief Minister was, what all will you be doing? He said that... I have come to vacate my Kapurthala residence, uh, but here I am, uh, you know, here, and th that everything is personal. This is not personal. The fact that he has gone to meet Home Minister Amit Shah at Home Minister's residence, this is a political meeting. You know, it's not a courtesy call, and that the timing of such meeting is at a time when the entire Congress party in Punjab is imploding. So is Captain Amrinder Singh looking at a life beyond the Congress party? because he has reiterated that he is looking at all options, all cards are on his table because on the other side, Zaka, uh, for the BJP, they are also looking at some kind of toehold or foothold in Punjab. They do not have a face in Punjab and captains uh, stand on a number of issues have been very nationalist. So the BJP, if you look at the reaction that has come from several BJP leaders regarding captains ouster of many, in, in many ways, they had said that this is an insult to someone who is a veteran army man and someone who has governed a border state, a sensitive state. So okay. I think this meeting is hugely political and very, very important. But but given, you know, the stakes in Punjab, of course, the BJP is not a principal player there. They were for many years playing junior partner to the Akali Dal. Uh, given the farm laws and how entrenched 
the respective sides and their positions are. How realistic is the chances of Captain Amrinder Singh joining the BJP and leading the BJP in Punjab uh, into the polls? Well, I would not, you know, jump the gun whether he would be really the face of the BJP. But the BJP has been looking at trying to get or find an entry into Punjab. So far, they are really not even a player in Punjab, uh, Zaka. Shirmani Akali Dal, one of the oldest allies of the BJP, was with them, but they quit, uh, you know, citing the differences over the farm laws. Captain Amrinder Singh had met Home Minister Amit Shah uh, earlier, you know, when they, this entire impasse over the farm laws were concerned continuing but then he had met in the capacity of the chief minister of Punjab he wanted to really communicate the concerns of the farmers right now he's meeting him as a Congress leader as a disgruntled Congress leader to be specific mm -hmm. for him to visit home ministers residence is important this is a meeting when you become significance significant because he is not meeting him at South block or, yeah. or, or North block should I say as at home ministers office he has chosen to uh, be called at his residence so let's be clear that this is a political meeting as much as the captain wants to send a message so does the BJP uh, absolutely this is purely a political meeting this is not just a cursed courtesy call or a personal meeting as uh, the captain said uh, when he landed at the airport Pallavi Ghosh also joining us live from the Congress office uh, what what are you picking up I mean this is a huge political development uh, the captain former Punjab chief minister lifelong congressman Today is in the residence of the Union Home Minister. Surely it's not just, you know, exchanging chai and biscuits. They'll be talking hardcore political stuff in the run-up to the Punjab elections. What are you hearing from the Congress? See, what I'm hearing from uh, certainly Captain Amrinder Singh's office is that it's largely going to be a curtsy call. It's also uh, got to do about the farmers' ongoing agitation. And what they're saying is that this is something which he's met earlier with because he comes from Punjab and he understands that it's a border state and we cannot have a situation where we have endless so-called restlessness. The farmers' protests are going on for such a long time and therefore uh, some solution needs to be found out and both of them have to walk the talk. But that's what we are being told. Uh, the meeting has just about begun. We have to wait for the nuances of the meeting really to come out, what the captain has to say. But, you know, the, it's interesting two points over here. He chooses his second day in the national capital to meet the Home Minister in a complete breach which he's had with the Congress party. That's one. Second, the Congress will always find a reason to pinpoint the fact that why does a captain have to go and meet someone, someone from the BJP? So there will be those political angles which will be sought. Third is that if indeed he's going to pick up only the farmer's issue, then I think the captain is going to try and send out his message also that I'm the only one who understands Punjab, the people of Punjab, what the people of Punjab need. And he's always been making the point, we cannot have an economic insecure relation, uh, situation in Punjab uh, with a long, prolonged uh, farmer's protest. And therefore his message to the, uh, to the Congress party also would be that with this political uncertainty which is going on presently, I'm the only one who actually can and offer that solution but I was never ever given that chance what may that solution be because uh, ultimately you know both sides are very very well entrenched in their positions the center is absolutely clear there's no question of any rollback of these uh, laws or if indeed the farmers have specific concerns please come and discuss that uh, and the farmers on the other hand are saying they're not going to leave from these uh, border areas of Delhi uh, until the farm laws are uh, rolled back. Uh, uh, stay on with us Pallavi, I'm going to come back to you. Arun Dhanta is also joining us live from Patiala outside Navjot Singh Sidhu's residence. I don't know if you're getting any initial reaction but this is a, a hugely important political development. Captain Amrinder Singh, former Chief Minister, the man that Navjot Singh Sidhu ousted is now in the house of uh, the Union Home Minister discussing politics. Well, that's right, uh, Zaka. Yesterday, when uh, uh, Captain Amrinder Singh reached in the national capital, everyone was speculating that he would uh, he would be meeting Amit Shah and J.P. Nadda in Delhi. At that point, the tweet came from the media advisor of former Chief Minister Ravin Tukral uh, that he uh, is in Delhi to meet some of his friends. And people were guessing at that time that who are those friends of Amrinder Singh whom he has come to meet in the national capital. And today, uh, you know, he has reached at Amit Shah's residence and it has become amply clear that uh, it was uh, only about these friends 
about whom he was talking about. So it's a massive, massive development when Amrinder Singh is reaching at the Union Home Minister Amit Shah's residence and uh, the picture is getting clearer day by day uh, that in coming few days we'll see, uh, you know, uh, uh, Captain Amrinder Singh getting into the fold of BJP. At least that's what we are picking up from our sources at this moment. And in fact, some of the sources are telling that uh, very soon they are planning Amrinder Singh to take on board. Now, uh, you know, what we are also picking is that uh, they are going to uh, strategize things that how they can take, uh, uh, you know, things forward from now on because there are various issues uh, okay. at hand before the government, A, the farmers protest, especially uh, farmers who come, who come from uh, Punjab and Amrinder Singh is also uh, coming from Punjab. So how they are going to tackle that with Amrinder Singh's entry, all of all these things okay. will be uh, revealed or you know, unfolded in coming few days. So it's going to be very, very crucial. Amrinder Singh has set the tone by visiting Amit Shah's uh, house I, I today, think it's a now. hugely political moment this. Uh, Captain Amrinder Singh, the former Punjab chief minister ousted some would say in the most disgraceful of fashions an army veteran now meeting the union home minister so political circles are a buzz on his possible if not entry into the BJP some kind of understanding with the BJP but it is easier said than done and I'm going to get Hemant Atri and all our guests to weigh in on this there are commonalities I think Maria is 100% right when she says you know on national issues, on national security issues, whether it's surgical strikes, you know, Pakistan, drugs coming from across the border, the captain and the BJP are pretty much on the same page. Even, you know, in terming uh, Navjot Singh Sidhu, quote unquote, an anti national, it's the same line that the BJP has also taken. But this whole farm laws, Hemantatri, if they stay as is, and the center is very clear that there's no question of diluting them or rolling them back, then how much elbow room does Captain Amrinder Singh have? Uh, to join the BJP, notwithstanding the farm laws. See, Zaka, whatever has happened today, it is nothing strange that Captain has met. It was a work in progress since the day Captain stepped down from the Chief Ministership. That is number one. This meeting, which is going right now, it was slated for yesterday, but the schedule was leaked and Amit Shah was very, very annoyed with the people that how it was leaked. Of course, it was alleged that it was leaked from Captain Amrinder Singh's side. Since this was coming up, I have worked a lot on this and got, got fed feedback from the highest sources in BJP as well as Amarinder Singh's close aides. What is going to happen, Zaka, is as you rightly pointed out, Center has categorically told him that they are not going to take back these formulas. That yeah. is one very, very clear. Yeah. Now, what they have told, and this thing was, you know, when, when you meet the top two in BJP, it's not without a purpose. Let's be very clear. Mm -hmm. Things have already been discussed, thrashed out, and yesterday evening, if you recollect, Amit Shah also had, uh, had a great, long, detailed meeting with Mr. Tarun Chug, who is the general secretary in charge of Punjab, yes. BJP. That is one. Now, what they are intending to going to do is, they have told Captain Amrinder Singh in no unclear terms that if you want to come, you are most welcome. Your na nationalistic uh, narrative is really, you know, it gels with us. Hmm. But they have told him that this agitation, farmer agitation, was, you know, supported and created by you. Yes. And now they have told him that if you want to come, then first you have to get this agitation withdrawn. I'm t telling you from the highest of sources. Mm -hmm. And what Captain Amrinder Singh has said, okay, you must give some relaxation, at least some points on which he can talk to the farmer leaders okay. unofficially. And the formula that is coming up, that's a breaking you can say also for your channel, what they have said is that the High Command has said, BJP High Command has said, that they can think of forming a larger committee which has a wide representation from the, all the leading farm organizations. And then there will be a big leader like Satpal Malik or somebody at the top who has been you know, championing the cause of farmer, farmers. Yeah. And what they intend to do is they intend to follow, they intend to form a committee, a high-level mm -hmm. committee, and they will give him some time the committee, that to discuss and thresh out all the issues and whatever they suggest, then the center can take care of that. Now the issue is, Captain Amrinder Singh is already 80 years of age. Yes, correct. High Command, BJP High Command has no face in Punjab to project in the coming elections, which are coming after 120 to 130 days. Mm -hmm. precisely. Now what they intend to do is, they will certainly make Captain as a face, like they did Yedurappa in Karnataka. Yes. They will... If at all they happen to form the government, they will keep him the chief minister for a while 
and then they can suitably adjust him as a governor or something somewhere. But they will not keep him in active politics. Now it is to be seen whether this Cap uh, Captain Amarinder Singh is meeting number two today. Mm -hmm. Number two is meeting. Yes. If there is some kind of compromise and some kind of, you know, they are able to minimize their gaps, whatever they are arguing. Yes. Then they can certainly make him to meet number one. Okay. As early as day after tomorrow or maybe tomorrow. And things can be really coming out. But one thing is very sure. Center is not going to take these farmlands back. At the max, what they are offering now is first you get this agitation, you know, taken off. Mm -hmm. And then we will form a committee, including the leaders of leading leaders of farmer, farmers' organizations, because there are many of them. Okay, they okay. It's interesting. It's time. interesting the formula that you're putting out on the table. We're also getting some inside scoop uh, on this meeting, and Pallavi is breaking this information for us. Uh, she's saying sources close to Amrinder Singh are telling her that all options are open for the captain. Uh, right now, the meeting is on the farm issues, and Hemadatri is 100% right. How do they resolve or minimize the gaps? The center clearly it does not want to take the laws back. Uh, wants the agitation to end. Amrinder Singh needs something to go back to the farmers and say, look, I have got this for you, so kindly go back uh, to your fields and to your homes. But right now, the story that we are breaking is that Yes, Captain Amrinder Singh is meeting uh, uh, Union Home Minister Amit Shah. Uh, if they narrow the differences, if they narrow the gaps, then who knows? Who knows what else is up on the table as far as Amrinder Singh and perhaps his potential relationship with the BJP is concerned? Uh, Charu Pragya is also there with us. Uh, Charu Pragya, I mean, it, it seems like, yeah, I mean, it would have been an, an obvious thing for anybody in Captain Amrinder Singh's position to do uh, when he was ousted in the manner in which he was 10 days ago. Uh, but will he join your party? I mean, let's face it, your party is still a number four party in Punjab. Uh, the farm laws is a very, very thorny issue there. So what is it that uh, Captain Amrinder Singh can go back to the farmers and to the people of Punjab with saying that, look, this is what I've managed to get from the BJP? Zaka, I've been play, paying close attention to the words which Captain is using for Sidhu. He used words like unstable for border state of Punjab. He used words which actually we should be paying great heed to. And Congress put a man like that in charge of a border state, in charge of a state from where we have threat from across the border. And that is something which should never be taken lightly. And I think this is a faux pas which was created entirely by the Congress leadership and they have shown to the people that they are not aware of what is happening on ground. The terminology I've been using and the comparison I'm drawing is this. Ghar phook tamasha dek. That is what the Gandhi siblings have done. They have set fire to one stable state that they had and now they're not sure which way to turn. As for BJP, we always will welcome anybody with a nationalistic mindset and approach and that can never be questioned about captain. Mm. But um, the entire state of affairs has become really sad and I think Think this just shows Congress that they are nowhere on the ground. The few leaders that they've had across the country have left them one by one across the nation. Before captain, there was the former chief minister of Goa who has also left Congress. Yes. So it, it seems to be quite complicated. Of course, I'm only commenting as an outsider, as a bystander. And BJP is always going to be devoted to the welfare of the people across the country. And anyone who joins us in our vision and anyone who thinks that they can work for the better betterment of the nation, keeping our core ideology in mind will always be welcome, I'm sure. All right. Uh, I'll give Rashid the final word, 30 seconds. Uh, politics is the art of the possible. Who would have imagined six months ago, uh, Captain Amrinder Singh riding on the, uh, the wave of this farmer anger, all set to come back to power, is ousted in the manner in which he's ousted. And now there is the very, very real possibility, Rashid Kidwai, that he could be the face of the BJP in Punjab going into this election if they're able to resolve the differences on the farm laws. Rashid. Absolutely, Zaka, it's fascinating. I call it, this is Ajit Pawar's syndrome. And look at the BJP. It has based its own lifelong Prachara party workers at age of 75, uh, you know, uh, uh, age bar cap. And for captain, it's, it's breaking all its, its own norms. So it's rather fascinating. Yes, unless that farm laws are withdrawn, I would still insist that about the story I told you. You know, how much is zero plus zero? Okay. But I, I tell you what, on the, on the nationalistic credentials, you can't get anybody more 
uh, the uh, you know fitting those credentials than Captain Amrinder Singh. So that is a huge uh, tick for the BJP. It's a huge uh, tick in the box as far as the BJP is concerned. But yes, there is still differences when it comes to the farm laws. It's very simple. How can the BJP save face without rolling the laws back? What can Captain Amrinder Singh extract from the BJP and from the government so that he can go back to the farmers and, and show something to them saying that this is what I've got for you and there, thereby call off your protest. So there is still some work to be done. And if that gap can be bridged, then ladies and gentlemen, uh, the day may not be far uh, in this election cycle when Captain Amrinder Singh, who's been a lifelong congressman, congressman for more than 50 years of his life, former army captain, uh, at the fag end of his political career, is going into an election, easily the last election of his life, going into it as the face of the BJP. That's why they say Indian politics is such a fascinating story from one day to the next. I'll catch you again at 9 o'clock with Brass Tax. Thanks for your time.